Paul Walter Hauser back here on the Rich Eisen Show talking about Blackbird, Apple TV+. Plus. Also in this uh, show is Ray Liotta. I mean, Dude. may he rest in peace. What was that? Uh, what was that experience like for you? You got any good stories? Yeah, on that, man. Paul? Rest in power to that dude. Um, he's attending a much, uh, much greater premiere than us last night. Mm-hmm. Um, he's at a much better party. Ray, Li- Ray Liotta, I mean, owns every scene he's in, every space he's given. He mm-hmm. he really gives one of his greatest performances in the show, in my personal opinion. And he plays the dad of, of Taron Egerton, who correct? He plays the father who was kind of, you know, as a cop was on the take and <clears throat> wasn't the most, uh, uh, well, wasn't the greatest cop. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously Taron's character, Jimmy Keen, wasn't the most honest person either. So there's kind of a bit of a generational sin uh, portrayal and, and the father-son relationship is really complicated but beautiful in the show. Mm-hmm. Taron, and, Taron and Ray are just really... They they have really believable chemistry. You know? And Taron winds up in scenes with you by in the prison. In yeah, the he kind of does the undercover thing, like The Departed or Mississippi Burning. You're kind of infiltrating this group of people and and trying to bring them to justice in the sense that Larry Hall could have been let out. You know, he did the confessions, then he recanted his confessions. Mm-hmm. It's a very messy situation in which you need something to nail somebody down, and uh, the real Jimmy Keen did that, which is you know. Thank God. This is based on a true story. Based on a true story. Mm-hmm. Happened in the 90s in the Midwest. And uh, and yeah, our cinematography and our locations and, and the, the design of the show, it really does feel like that place and time, even though we shot it in New Orleans. And I know your character in, in real life, again, uh, had something to do with Civil War reenactments, which is why we're seeing you in Mutton Chops. Yeah, that wasn't like a, that was, that's not in your That's not in your contract rider, Paul? No. Like, I demand to be in Mutton Chops no. from playing a psychopath? Make me look like a sadistic uh, Muppet, please. That's what I said to them. No, it, the, the guy was really into this uh, reenactment stuff, so he had what what are, I guess, known as burn sides on, on his face. And you got to know, as a 246-pound man while shooting that, yes, wearing sir. a prison jumpsuit with a wig on, with those mutton chops, uh, I didn't sweat at all, Red. <laughs> <laughs> I smelled really good. So you didn't grow that? This was applied yeah. every day? You're- yeah, yeah. These women, Catherine, Nana, and Galaxy, they were my hair and makeup team that came in every day, 90 minutes to two hours uh, to you're, make you're, me look like You're known for committing to a role, Paul. You didn't commit to the to the chops. You didn't go and grow those out, or you have no ability? Because I, I would have no ability. I, 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 the, the, the sides, the mustache, and the beard need to sometimes be uh, drawn in for me. I don't have that ability. You know? Rich, Rich mm-hmm. you're a beautiful man. Don't Bless do you. that. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate second, that. Second, um, <laughs> I I'll, appreciate that was your first point. Thank you. The, <laughs> listen, I, you can buy all the hormonal pills uh, possible on Amazon Prime. It doesn't mean you're going to wake up with those mutton chops, which I found out. <laughs> Paul Walter Hauser here uh, on the on the Rich Eisen Show. Cobra Kai also, man. By the way, is today the anniversary of Karate Kid 3? Three. Three. Karate Kid 3. Hey, yes, which is the, the last prequel to Cobra Kai. I can't believe I we're think. even working on the anniversary of Karate <laughs> so Kid should... 3. What is wrong with us? <laughs> we should have observed today. It's pretty awful. We're, we are observing that. Um, yeah, no, that show came out of nowhere for me. I got a, a call where they were like, yo, the guys who did Harold and Kumar are doing Karate Kid, and they, they liked you and I, Tanya, and want you to play a role. And I'm like, this doesn't... This a real thing? That's like a Mad Lib, by yeah, the it was, way. It was, like it's just one proper <laughs> noun after another yeah. that you wouldn't think would be in the same sentence. Yeah, it was a little. They loved you. In, they loved you in Itania. Yeah, they thought <laughs> they, they were comparing me to like John Goodman and Big Lebowski because the Itania character yeah, is so right. like, you know, uh, in that lane of be- self belief, which is so funny. But um, but I, I you know I did it because they were so funny. Like me and the guys who created Cobra Kai, all we would do is quote like Dirty Work and Billy Madison. And make each other laugh. And I was like, even if the show isn't great, I'm going to have fun making it. And then lo and behold, Boom. it goes from YouTube to Netflix and becomes this like huge show. It was really cool. I mean, I assume you, you saw Karate Kid as a, as a kid yourself. Definitely. Right? Yeah. I had seen the first one. I hadn't seen the sequels. And then I brushed up when I got the part. So then why would you observe Karate Kid 3 Day if you've never seen it? Did have you, you ever see heard it? of a born again Christian? Rich? <laughs> Some of us come to the party a little bit late. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Good God, man. <laughs> I'm a Great belated answer. convert. Great answer. <laughs> so did you watch Karate Kid 3 in advance of your... Uh, your yeah. It's okay it was, if you skip that. I it, think it's okay if you skip that. It's it's funny how some of these guys yeah. that come back on the show and, and revive their characters, they kind of look back like, oh, that's so, you know, oh, it's silly looking back on the thing. But it's like, dude, you got to... 
you got to own it. You know, you got to own yeah. the fact that people love this thing. It's a lot of people sometimes make fun of Creed or Nickelback. That's become a weird cultural thing. But it's like, dude, th- that music makes people happy. Like, yeah. It, it you, you should be able to not knock on it and make it a, a thing. Like it's somebody's favorite band. You know? Paul Walter Hauser here on the Rich Eisen Show on Instagram at Paul W. Hauser Graham right here on the program. Uh, where are you from? Where are you from originally? Originally from Saginaw, Michigan. Okay. Uh, um, a scary little town full of beautiful people near Flint, Michigan. Yes. And, and you know, my, my, my dad is, was a Lutheran pastor, mm-hmm. and we lived in kind of a rough neighborhood. So it was a really interesting upbringing where Monday through Saturday, it kind of felt like the wire. We knew gang members, and we had, you know, Damn. police in the neighborhood all the time and stuff. But then on Sunday, we'd go to this Protestant church, and I'm wearing a bow tie and eating donut holes and talking to senior citizens. So I think that <laughs> upbringing really made me the weird, dark Darkly comedic character actor that I am. Is you know? a, so was that thirty eight mile? Is that what that is? Thirty eight mile. Is that is that, is that uh, what like, you like that one, Chris? That's well, that's I, that's well, I know it's a good one. That's if, well if I made done. Chris laugh over North here. Bond <laughs> Street, yo. Well North Bond Street. <laughs> 38 mile. I couldn't go 48 mile. I mean, that there would probably been too much. Um, I got to give props to your dude for wearing this Bullet Club shirt. I'm a big wrestling fan, so this is like... Well, TJ, who is currently doing his job as the social media grandmaster, taking a photograph of us right now, he's a diehard wrestling guy. So is that your, is that, is that your sport, wrestling? That's or kinda, is that, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's obviously a quasi-sport. It's, it's predetermined, but I, I, man, do I love... Wait a minute. What? <laughs> no, I'm what? just kidding. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> see, um, I'm late to things too. I'm a born again Jew. Then I guess right Eminem. there, I was late to that. <laughs> I guess that's is, me. Eminem is, or uh, MMA is also predetermined. I don't know if they told me. What? <laughs> yeah, Get blowing the lid here. off right now. Damn, man. Um, no, I, I love. I grew up loving WCW and the WWE, then okay. F. Mm-hmm. Uh, but lately, I've only been watching uh, All Elite Wrestling. Uh, it's okay. run by Tony Khan. Yeah, sure, yeah. And, and man, they're doing some tremendous stuff. They got the, the sort of uh, emeritus status guys like Chris Jericho and Sting, but then they have these newcomers who they give a spotlight to who nobody, nobody even knows. And then you see them do incredible, dangerous feats of uh, athletic violence. So do you have like a Piston fandom in you? Red Wings, anything like that? Or you know, Tigers? I, Michigan I, State? Anything I, like that? Michigan? I'm such a fair weather piece of crap. I really like watching <laughs> great people who win. That's kind of a thing. Oh. So I grew up wa- watching a lot of Chicago Bulls. I, I have been a Green Bay Packer fan since about 94, 95. By the oh, way, it makes cool. you a smart man oh, yeah. uh, to hop on board. Just at the, <laughs> well, I mean, if you grew up in my life is depressing in, enough. I no, don't need my sports team. No, if you grew up in Michigan, okay, and yeah. uh, you hop on the Packers just as far as ascending, and Reggie White arrives. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's a and and then Michigan's finest Desmond Howard coming into winning an, an yeah. MVP for the Super Bowl. I smart love move. That. Love that team. Robert Brooks, Don Beebe. Um, that, that was Don Beebe is a word that you don't hear very Antonio much Fre- around. I, I'm not even sure his family says it. <laughs> Antonio Freeman. No, yeah, it, it was a really fun team. And that, uh, this guy, Dave Bergant, one of our school teachers growing up, he just like indoctrinated us and converted us from Lions to Packers. And, uh, and yeah, I got to work with Aaron Rodgers briefly at the ESPYs. We did a I, Tanya spoof with Danica Patrick. And that was like, like working with Aaron Rodgers was a bigger deal to me than if somebody was like, you want to work with, you know, Vin Diesel or Will Smith or whoever. Like it was incredible. Aaron Rodgers is it for you then? Big fan. So, so Big you, I, I must have missed that. Well, I haven't been invited to the ESPYs in how long has it been, Chris? Now for me, twenty years is what it been. Ooh, so uh, I think we're coming up on years your years 20, So yeah, I missed that one. So you, you were, you were, you were replies, you re- reprised your role of Sean Eric Eckhart. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and he was he was Galuli. He was Jeff Galuli. Galuli. And, I and missed that. He did a great job. It's on YouTube. Some really bad version. Somebody like recorded on their phone on television. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, man. The, you know what's funny is I met you years ago. Me. In like 2010. Okay. In Malibu, there was some celebrity football game. Oh yeah, the the uh, uh, the Madden. The Madden. Yeah. T- you know, uh, flag football game. I was in the audience. Uh, and I was berating James Vanderbeek the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember it was him, T.O., Joe Montana. I, I was, they, get, they give you like, and it was so, you know, it's so humbling. They're like, here's a personal pan pizza and a soda, and we need you to cheer the whole time. And, you know, it's yeah. like being a background actor. 
but I just thought it'd be a fun thing to go watch, so I did it. Uh-huh. And the whole time I'm going, hey, Vanderbeek. I'm kind of doing like a Patrick Warburton voice. I'm like, hey, Vanderbeek, I want to see some blood out there, son. <laughs> and, and after like the third time I shouted at him, he turned around and he goes, I'll make you proud, dad. And, and, like, <laughs> and it became like a back and forth bit where I was like, Vanderbeek, you're up Dawson's Creek without a paddle. And, he, you know, we just went back and forth. It was so funny. But wow. I saw you there. You're very nice. I appreciate you. You, you said what up and, and we're very kind. And I think you took selfies or oh, signed cool. autographs or whatever. Hey, man, uh, my pleasure. It's amazing. Vanderbeek. The small world. I think that what they, they, they had a Madden um, flag football game up there. It was beautiful it was right there gorgeous. in the Malibu Park with the Pacific Ocean right yeah. there. I think they did it two years. Was this the one where... Uh, Jerry Rice was beaten by Marina, Maria Menounos at That's the very exactly end. The one. Yeah. By the way, Jerry Rice, the most competitive person I've ever met in my entire <laughs> life. Shocker. This just in. Him getting beaten by Maria Menounos in that flag football mm-hmm. game was something that I think put him in a funk perhaps for months. Still I think to this day. Yeah, like I wouldn't even bring it up to him. It. And that was also the time I think Irv blew out his Achilles in that one. Oh, that, yeah. Michael Irvin blew out his Achilles in that game. <laughs> Which is not a cool thing to be no, honest. No, it's not. But it's it, yeah. it's rough and tumble that flag football. Yeah, world, evidently, man. It certainly, was, uh, if you're getting your 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 uh, your tower buzzed by uh, by you and your James Vanderbeek and Paul Walter Hauser is heckling you went for it for the whole thing. Joe Man- Manganiello was there. Oh. Yeah, it was like a really. There were some very athletic people that I was like, these people could play. All right, football. Very good. Yeah. And man, you played some uh, some nineties. Folks, I mean, from Sean Eckert and yeah. I, Tanya, and Richard Jewell. Did did you meet the real Richard Jewell at all, or no, not really? No, Richard, um, regrettably, he, he passed, I, I don't think, know in that. 2007. All right, so then I'm a dumbass. So then what did you do? No, it's what okay. Did you, I know you do a lot of research. There's, uh, <laughs> there's, I, I never, I never oh, met man. Sean I never met Sean Eckhart either. He okay. passed away in 07, the same year. Damn, um, bad year for guys who were famous years. in the 90s. And involved in the Olympics. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, no, also, there's some weird, crazy Jay Leno story where Jay Leno said about Richard Jewell on late night. He said, this uh, Richard Jewell guy, he uh, he kind of looks, looks like the guy who helped Galuli whack uh, Nancy Kerrigan. And it's like, I ended up playing these two guys. <laughs> it's so weird that that's like a thing. That's funny. Um, and one of my wow. heroes is Chris Farley, who I talk about ad nauseum. And Chris Farley played... Sean Eckhart in a sketch when Nancy Kerrigan hosted Saturday Night Live. Mm. And then Richard Jewell did Weekend Update with Norm MacDonald in like 97. Another icon so of yours, I'm sure. Oh, God, I love Norm MacDonald. I, I haven't watched his new special because I know that when I do, I need to be like my phone on airplane. I need no interruption. I, I just bet. have to have a spiritual, emotional experience watching that. Who are your other uh, icons that you... Oh man! Yeah. Well, I, I yeah, I showed you. I got him on my arm. I right. got a tattoo that. Um, You're wearing a very nice cardigan in the back. You decided not to rock the cardigan on the show. I, I like mean, the orange cardigan. That was a, that was a hundred dollar cardigan on sale at Macy's for thirty bucks. This dude <laughs> pulled that right off the rack. <laughs> you know, I, I, as you know, I I, I, I like hey, a good cardigan. Like a good uh, every now and then, I don't. Which is a fan of the. I do not front cardigans. I do not. I, front. Um, I, I no. I I have this stylist Jack Manson who's awesome. He works with Jamie Fox and he. Always makes me look cooler than I am, which I appreciate <laughs> very much. <laughs> oh, but I'm trying to own the whole hip hop chic thing. I have a I have an EP coming out July 8th. Yes, it's uh, I go under the name Signet Ringer. Um, Signet Ring, of course, like making uh, a stamp of approval. Yes, and then Ringer in sports, somebody who's good at something but doesn't look like they would be or appears not to be. And so, what do you? So you are. What what style I'm, of music? Uh, I'm in your, the ringer in, in hip hop. I think um, I think people wouldn't expect me to be any good at it, but I'm really proud of these six songs I'm putting out. Okay, can and we hear some the bars? The album is called Murder for Hire, but Hire is spelled H I G H E R. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Did you uh, sample any for Taron Edgerton? I mean, he's he's, uh, his, he's, he's a hip hop a... fan. He and I both love Run the Jewels. We we listen to that quite a bit. What I'm just saying is that you know Taron is uh, somebody whose work is in fact associated with music so oh. that's what i'm saying like did you did you did you bust any of that out for him if i did it was when i was inebriated uh, i don't <laughs> think i would so really try to make him listen to my stuff why <laughs> i don't you know ask him for his opinion i mean if you're um, putting it out there i, I mean... should i should no i think i played him some rough cuts when okay. we first met and go. um 
and yeah, we we had a lot of fun working together, man. I bet. Really good dude. I Who bet. would you say you sound like, Paul? Stylistically. Um, I mean, the way I compare myself, I I I, I am like a, a Jesus dude. So like, I listen to some gospel hip hop. Uh, I, I I call it like if Lecrae said the f word a bunch. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I I just I very much I don't like this sort of overly sterilized uh, want to be pure christian uh entertainment stuff i think they need to keep it real okay and uh and so i'm kind of doing the gospel meets meets hip-hop in a way and that is called um what did you say it was called signet you... signet ringer signet and ringer. uh the ep murder for hire murder for hire h-i-g-h-g-h-e-r that drops the same day as blackbird july it drops 8th. the same day as blackbird july 8th wow what a double dip for you man blackbird available for streaming on apple tv starting next week July 8th, and then everybody check out uh, Paul Walter Hauser's new EP uh, dropping on the same day. Thanks for coming here, man. Hey, thanks for having me, dude. I really, I really am a fan of your show. Thank and, you. I appreciate that. And you always that. do such a great job. And you always bring on people I want to watch. So. Fantastic. Thanks. Hopefully that includes you. I think. I'm okay. Gonna... <laughs> I, 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 think, I think it does as well. And Still then, a new convert to and that, The mug is yours to keep, by the way. Oh, thank you, man. Mug is yours to keep. It's a Rich Eisen show. Watch the Rich me. Eisen show. And also, screw ESPN. No, no, no. Did we get it? Did we get it? No. Did it make the air? No. I don't, no, come on, guys. I'm I don't approve proof. that I'm, message. I'm, I'm just kidding. No. Take two. He doesn't take, co-sign take two. that. Take, no, take okay, two. take two. Yeah. Watch the Rich Eisen show. We keep in touch with the folks at ESPN. <laughs> I like the first one. <laughs> you like the first one because best you dad like, ever, ladies and Best gentlemen. dad ever. That's best dad me. ever, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you so sweet. much. <laughs> uh, Blackbird on Apple TV Plus again, starting on July eighth, and then the new EP from uh, uh, Paul Walter House of Signet Ringer. Signet Ringer, aka Signet Ringer, right? That's what it is. It, yeah, that's your I, I, I like how difficult I've made it for people to look this up. That's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks Appreciate for having it. me. Man. Okay.